This is from JC. JC, oh, I thought we had JC last week. Maybe I, maybe it's another JC. Uh, <laughs> hey Lars, I have a question about tracing. Um, not the tracing we just saw. Uh, in an imported decal image and would like to trace it. I lowered the opacity a lot so I can trace, but it has many curves and my lines are hard to get straight. Let me just show you what uh, JC sent me here in an image. All right. So um, this here is, it looks like it's a car emblem. As far as I can, I know, I think it's actually, is it, is it a master logo? I think it's a master kind of car. I'm not 100 sure. But what we're looking at here is a, a line going down, kind of trying to ch chase this. And of course, this, I think this was taken with a cell phone. Um, but yes, uh, that can be kind of hard to do. What you want to do, JC, is probably using splines instead so let me just show you that what i mean by that um so i i try to find this i tried to find this online but i couldn't um be, i couldn't find it where it was like looking straight at it and you probably want something like it looks like you have that is straight at so what i found instead was well let's look at the master logo master logo master master i don't know uh so i'm gonna go in here and say attach a can which just like you probably already did and select a face here and i'm going to select this uh this logo right here and uh, of course when you bring it in here we've talked a lot about logos that you get an option to um you can you can manipulate them uh in here i'm a big fan of doing the opacity la level here leave that around 50 or so um and you could also another thing that is good is you get here and you move around is get that origin there kind of like situated some somewhere can be can be kind of helpful um, so what I wanted to show you JC is that instead of using lines and art to do these kind of things you're probably better off using the spline tool so if I go in here and create a new sketch on this face here um, the spline tool is a little bit better now what many people will do with the spline tool is that they will click on the spline tool and then they will select somewhere around here and they will kind of like start clicking around multiple, multiple, multiple times. And, um, and it actually, you know, I think that was because that was how, I don't know, that's how we used to do it in the olden days maybe. Um, so people will trace it around like that. I actually am not a big a big fan of doing it like that. Control Control Z to undo. Let's go all the way back so we didn't have a spline tool. Uh, what I will do for this one here is probably just click once and then might click twice. Might try to click here and then one down here near the bottom. Probably right around there and hit OK. Because what you get is you get these handles and they are much better to control the spline with. And you can kind of adjust them. Um, they will kind of, the more you get of these, the harder it almost gets. But this will be one way um, to kind of play around with, with the spline here in the end. Um, and get a, now I, I didn't do a very good job placing the canvas. On that origin, did I? Something. That's probably better right there. Uh, so I would adjust these spline handles, as you're seeing here. Let's go back and edit it again. Um, I would be playing around and try to match this up with um, with our point here and get it as close as you want. Um, when you got this all the way around, now these, I always talk about how you're going to turn your, um, if I just, yeah, let's just do one more. Um, I always, you always hear me talk about, so I would do one for there. Um, and adjust that one to be somewhat close to, see, that's pretty good. Um. I'm always talking about you have to fully define your splines or, or your, your, your sketch geometry. But for splines, I actually don't do that. What I do, let me just get the last, now I'm going OCD here, let me get the last one here. 
So you get that, JC. I would. This is how I would trace around each of those. Yours is a little bit more complex than this. Um, but then in the end, when I've done this, I would go and I would right click on each spline and I would I would fix it. Fixing the spline in the end is a lot a much better way to do that on spline than trying to fully fully define them. I hope that was uh, I hope this was helpful. Oh, I don't sure I got this one fixed, but whatever. I hope that was that's how I would do that, JC. Um, that's how I would go ahead and uh, and work with that. Hope that was useful. Um, another option could be to, if you can get your logo. So your logo looked like it's a pixelated image. Um, you could use something like Adobe Illustrator or another program that can convert what is called from raster to vector. What means that you can break down a picture that is all pixels. You know that, right? Like all pixelated into actually geometry that is lines. And then you could bring that SVG file into, you can bring that one into Fusion by clicking the insert and bring that SVG file in right there. That's another way to do it. Um, if you don't want to sit there and trace it around, a couple of different ways to play with it. This is not necessarily Fusion 360's strength per se. Again, just like I talked about in the, in the last section where we talked about CAM, that CAM is based on kind of metal. Uh, and machining, you know, machine shop type work. The CAD inside of Fusion is based on mechanical CAD, um, not so much on freehand stuff. But I hope that was useful anyway.